is going on inside of Iran within the various factions and parties now governing Iran? Number two, what is going on inside of Iran with regard to public opinion, including the young generation, <coughs> workers, women, and other groups? Three, what should the U.S. reaction to the assertive new leader of Iran, who says he does not seek nuclear weapons, but whose policies have led to the United Nations consideration of how to deal with Iran's nuclear program? Four, is regime change possible? And if so, what is the best way for the U.S. government and other like-minded governments in Europe and elsewhere to pursue this type of policy? To consider these issues, we have a tremendous panel here today. Our second speaker is Dr. Ahura Pirouz Kalegi Yazdi, who is founder of the Hakka Movement for Freedom and Democracy and the program host of a popular television program that is broadcast into Iran. If imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, then Dr. Yazdi is doing very well indeed. Starting about three years ago as one of the few broadcasting into Iran, he now has many competitors with at least 20 other programmers out of Los Angeles and other locations in the United States. In an interesting article about Dr. Yazdi in the London Telegraph last Friday, the newspaper pointed out that uh, his program is a basically what they call a two-hour fair of, quote, Zoroastrianism, music, and political chit-chat. While the conventional wisdom is that Dr. Yazdi and other immigrant Iranian broadcasters have minimal support in Iran, the London Telegraph concluded that while U.S. officials are not relying on Dr. Yazdi's predictions as to how long the mullahs will last, they do now see the merits of his mode of delivery, i.e. satellite television. As indicated by the recent program announced by our Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice, Apart from his most recent political activities, Dr. Yazi is an expert and pioneer in the field of international aviation and the development and management of challenging aviation projects, having worked in that field since 1965. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen here in Washington. Good evening, my fellow compatriots and Iranian people in Iran, because at this time, this TV is directly my focus. Watching. Sean to me. This is how we say good evening. It's an honor and privilege for me to be here today to discuss the current situation in Iran and we will addressing the problems presented by the current regime in Iran, what I call Islamic terrorist regime. First, what's the current situation in Iran? and why is it a matter of concern. I will say that, that President Bush in his State of Union address accurately described the current situation in Iran. The Iranian people are being held hostage by a small critical elites that's resident to the freedom challenge and changes. For 27 years, the Iranian people have been denied an outlet to voice their opinion. The mullahs have shut down reformist newspapers, imprisoned those with courage to strike for better wages and labor conditions, dismantled websites, and jailed and tortured dissidents, journalists, and politicians. Unfortunately, speaking out against the autocratic government of mullahs often carries <coughs> brutal consequences. In my opinion, the mullah in Iran and their international terrorist allies will continue to disrupt the formation of peace, democracy, and the establishment of fair and just governments, not only in Iran, but also in its neighboring countries, Iraq, Afghanistan, and even Africa and other parts of the world. As a consequence, the Iranian people, even more than their Middle Eastern neighbors, are afraid to make their true view known to those who govern them. It is no surprise that the United Nations has described the human rights record of Iran one of the worst in the world. 
citing its persecution of religion and ethnic minorities and absence of free speech and due process under the Islamic theocracy. Iran is one of the few countries in the world where boys over 16 and girls over nine years of age can receive death penalty for not following the mullah's religious order. You may ask, how do I know this? How do I know such a thing? That's a fair question. You don't hear me? No. Good. This is <laughs> it's on, but thank you. That's a fair question if you ask me, how do I know such a thing? In answer, I have been through my broadcasting into Iran over the past three years in constant communication with my people in Iran. They call into my show a live Persian broadcasting on satellite or webcasting. They constantly inform me. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm used to have my own broadcasting in Persian language. I talk for hours and hours. <laughs> Just last Sunday, I had nine hours and 15 minutes live broadcasting. Yeah, five hours. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Bart Fisher told me, don't think here is a broadcasting. You have only 10 minutes. I'm it's not working, not. yes. It's not working. Even or not, because I was grown in Europe, in Switzerland, Holland, Belgium. It was not easy for me to come here to give the speech in English. So I made some notes. And now they put microphones on my nose. <laughs> I hope I will. So, for the past 27 years, I have worked with opposition group, those whose purposes was to overthrow the regime of Islamic Republic of Iran. I have been able to use this broadcasting system to encourage my fellow citizen in Iran and abroad to rise up against the brutal theocratic regime of Mullah. And I have succeeded in very and a great measure. The evidence of this success, or as you say, success, was the popular uprising of 5th of May, which is September 25th of 2004 and June 16, 2005, when there were massive demonstrations in the streets of Tehran and other cities across the Iran, for the first time in 27 years, and maybe for the first time in 1,400 years, that people carried, we are the children of Cyrus the Great, with a sign of good word, good thought, good deed. All these demonstrations and the events were widely reported by BBC, CNN, ABC, other news media such as Economist, Financial Times, Daily Telegraph, and many other European and other international media, especially those in the Middle East, is Haha or Haha, which is the Persian word for harmonization of material world and non-material world, with all aspects of nature and the universe. Haha calls for upgrading of social life, promoting justice, enhancing the economy and normalization the relationship between the people, not only in Iran, but all around the world. Honor, good thought, good word, good deed, action of old Persian tradition. 
I practice this philosophy and firmly believe that the freedom of every human being can come from practicing these principles. As a practitioner of Hacha, I believe a universal power connected as all and is omnipotent, infinite intelligence and pure love. My ancestor practiced Hacha in the great land of Persia. When I say my ancestor, in Parsi we say, I feel the vibration, I feel the positive energy in me and everybody for goodness and love and peace. I believe in a universal power. As I said, on my TV program, I was able to attract, or we were able to attract, millions of Iranians and thought to awaken them to free themselves from any limitation. I have thought and of the injustice of the Mullah's regime to encourage Iranians to take over their own destiny, but by uprising in massive number and claim their God-given freedom. In addition of over 2,000 hours on a live satellite TV program last year, I have spent hundreds of hours on the press conferences, lectures, meetings, to inform non-Iranian, I repeat, non-Iranian and politician that the mullahs are not Iranian, they are not Persian. I hope all non-Iranian by this time understand the mullahs in Iran are not Persian, are not Iranian. Even they don't speak Farsi, they go with Arabic language. That's not the first point, but more important, that the mullahs invaded my country, Iran. That the mullahs are still holding my people as hostage. And it's a terrible problem that they do not recognize any right, any human right for my people. So what is to be done to translate principles into the action. Today, the Hacha movement is the Hacha movement where, with its message are spreading, spreading rapidly all around Iran and the world. Hacha has today over 30 million followers. Even 11,000 has been registered to fly with me to Iran. This is in addition of tens of millions around the world who are believers to the Hakka. You find them mostly in India and Europe. Our plan is to guide Iranians back to their civilization and where they come from, their roots. As soon as they understand where are they from, there will be no Mullahs there. And they will be back to the reality. Our Hakha plan is as follows. Freedom of thought and expression to be initiated in Iran within three months. The concept of democracy will be introduced as first goal of social organization, the establishment and organization of a new form of government in Iran through a referendum within the shortest possible time frame. Establishment of peace and democracy, first in Iran, then in Iraq, and then Afghanistan, and then throughout the rest of the Islamic world, especially Middle East, on the shortest possible time frame, which will include Pakistan, Egypt, Palestine, Yemen, Saudi Arabia, and Al 
establishment of peace and democracy in Islamic Far East and African country, including Indonesia, Nigeria, etc. Adaption, this is very important, adaption of a modern confederation of state of Persia, Persian state, with all Ostoms, Ostoms, it means state in Farsi, in Persia, which include not only Ostoms in Iran, also Tajikistan, Afghanistan, Gurjistan, Kazakhstan, all those stands under one umbrella as Persian state, as it was in past in imperial Iran in the Great Persia. Now the question is, are we getting any result from our efforts? Since I started Hacha, but teaching Hacha to my fellow citizens, many Iranians are reported, the, as reported by the international media, have taken to the streets demanding their rights. Interesting, in Iran, some ladies, women, have started a silence revolution by wearing white, pink, or any dress which is not the way of code, coded by the, or imposed by the Islamic regime in Iran. We plan to intensify our effort using several mode, modes of communication. We now have 24 hours communication with Iran and around the world through internet, through TV, satellite TV, and many are relaying my voice from TV by radio or tapes distributing around in Iran. It would be important to have a support of the international community. Islamic deliverance has now become the full blow international problem. The United States, Europe, and other nations are now suffering from international Islamic terrorists, which is supported and sponsored by the mullahs in Iran. You're, you're nearing your end, Dr. <laughs> We are not sure how the we are not sure how the West is going to react, but we know that Iran, with it, with the seven thousand years of history and culture, has managed to survive survive from all invasion, including the Arabs and Islamic invasion. Iranian culture and language largely intact the sense of ethic that govern the daily life of the Iranian does not exist in Arabian country or Islamic country. Iranian, Persian, they have their own way of life. The Archimanian system, the national structure of government that created the ancient Persia, Persian Empire, remains alive and well as a valley and potent philosophy among all Iranian, especially the Yod and the Boom. The world economic situation combined with other multinational factors has created lose-lose situation. Presently, the entire world is financing the Islamic codes, a cause that got more serious as Iran confront the United Nations over the issue of its nuclear power in addition to human rights and terrorists. We expect that representatives from nations that constitute the old empire, the confederation of independent Ostan states of Iran, or old Persia, will join an effort to find solution to the problem that we have created, that it has been created and present situation. 
that's needed from international community, we would like to see a solidarity, a demonstration of solidarity from international community with the people of Iran. I'm trying to cut. Try harder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't treat you any better than my students, Dr. Dave. No, that's no touch by Much smarter. Don't you feel all the positive energy that Creator brought to this room today? In the same way, we have to go to overthrow these terrorists, not only in Iran, but worldwide. Because Iran, the Mullahs, is people in Tehran with 4.3 billion barrels per day financing international terror. I will stop. I thank you very much. I will leave the rest for when the questions. Arise. Thank you very much, Dr. Yazdi. Um, Illustrates the deep divisions within 